Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Thursday, May 4th, 2023. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's Word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. In our Old Testament reading for today, we turn to four chapters of uh, the prophecy of Isaiah that give us some history, uh, some uh, historical events that happened during the ministry of Isaiah. Today we're going to start by looking at chapter 36 of Isaiah's prophecy, which gives, which gives us an account of Sennacherib's invasion of the kingdom of Judah. Sennacherib was the king of Assyria, and he was now threatening the kingdom of Judah. And we're going to see that he is not just threatening Judah, he actually is challenging the true God of Judah. And that is really going to set him up for a major fall, as we will see in subsequent chapters. In the 14th year of King Hezekiah, King Sennacherib of Assyria attacked all the fortified cities of Judah and captured them. Then the king of Assyria sent his royal spokesman, along with a massive army, from Lachish to King Hezekiah at Jerusalem. The Assyrians stood near the conduit of the upper pool by the road to Launderer's Field. Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, who was in charge of the palace, Shebna, the court secretary, and Joah, son of Asaph, the court historian, came out to him. The royal spokesman said to them, Tell Hezekiah, the great king, the king of Assyria, says this, What are you relying on? You think mere words are strategy and strength for war. Who are you now relying on that you have rebelled against me? Look, you are relying on Egypt, that splintered reed of a staff that will pierce the hand of anyone who grabs it and leans on it. This is how Pharaoh, king of Egypt, is, all to, is to all who rely on him. Suppose you say to me, we rely on the Lord our God. Isn't he the one whose high places and altars Hezekiah has removed, saying to Judah and Jerusalem, you are to worship at this altar? Now make a deal with my master, the king of Assyria. I'll give you 2,000 horses, if you're able to supply riders for them. How then can you drive back a single officer among the least of my master's servants? How can you rely on Egypt for chariots and horsemen? Have I attacked this land to destroy it without the Lord's approval? The Lord said to me, attack this land and destroy it. Then Eliakim, Shebna, and Joah said to the royal spokesman, Please speak to your servants in Aramaic, since we understand it. Don't speak to us in Hebrew within earshot of the people who are on the wall. But the royal spokesman replied, Has my master sent me to speak these words to your master and to you? and not to the men who are sitting on the wall, who are destined with you to eat their own excrement and drink their own urine? Then the royal spokesman stood and called out loudly in Hebrew, listen to the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. This is what the king says, don't let Hezekiah deceive you, for he cannot rescue you. Don't let Hezekiah persuade you to rely on the Lord, saying, the Lord will certainly rescue us. This city will not be handed over to the king of Assyria. Don't listen to Hezekiah, for this is what the king of Assyria says. Make peace with me and surrender to me. Then every one of you may eat from his own vine and his own fig tree and drink water from his own cistern until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of grain and new wine, a land of bread and vineyards. Beware that Hezekiah does not mislead you by saying, the Lord will rescue us. Has any one of the gods of the nations rescued his land from the power of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Sepharvaim? Have they rescued Samaria from my power? Who among all the gods of these lands ever rescued his land from my power? So will the Lord rescue Jerusalem from my power? but they kept silent. They didn't say anything. For the king's command was, don't answer him. 
Then Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, who was in charge of the palace, Shebna, the court secretary, and Joah, son of Asaph, the court historian, came to Hezekiah with their clothes torn and reported to him the words of the royal spokesman. We now turn to chapter 6 of the revelation that Jesus gave to John. And in this revelation, in this chapter, we're going to see Jesus open up six of the seven seals that are on the scroll that we saw him take from God's right hand yesterday. This is the first of a series of visions that we're going to be seeing in the book of Revelation. And it's important to know that all of these visions portray pretty much the same set of events, but looking at them from a different perspective and portraying them using different imagery. We're going to see a series of events that Jesus is going, is going to tell us will happen in the days leading up to his return on the last day. All of these are things that Jesus has told us before. In fact, if you go back to Matthew chapter 24, you will be able to see that Jesus lists the same things that are going to be portrayed here in this chapter. Famines, wars, pestilence, persecution. All of these things are now going to be symbolically portrayed using different horsemen and other things that the Lord is going to portray in this revelation. And it's going to end with the sixth seal being opened, which will then give us a portrayal of the final judgment on the last day. And so we watch as Jesus opens the first six seals on this scroll. Then I saw the Lamb open one of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures say with a voice like thunder, Come. I looked, and there was a white horse. Its rider held a bow. A crown was given to him, and he went out as a conqueror in order to conquer. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come. Then another horse went out, a fiery red one, and its rider was allowed to take peace from the earth so that people would slaughter one another, and a large sword was given to him. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come. And I looked, and there was a black horse. Its rider held a set of scales in his hand. Then I heard something like a voice among the four living creatures say, a quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for a denarius, but do not harm the oil and the wine. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, come. And I looked and there was a pale green horse. Its rider was named Death and Hades was following after him. They were given authority over a fourth of the earth to kill by the sword, by famine, by plague, and by the wild animals of the earth. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slaughtered because of the word of God and the testimony they had given. They cried out with a loud voice, Lord, the one who is holy and true, how long until you judge those who live on the earth and avenge our blood? So they were each given a white robe, and they were told to rest a little while longer until the number would be completed of their fellow servants and their brothers and sisters who were going to be killed just as they had been. Then I saw him open the sixth seal. A violent earthquake occurred. The sun turned black like sackcloth made of hair. The entire moon became like blood. The stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its unripe figs when shaken by a high wind. The sky was split apart like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved from its place. Then the kings of the earth, the nobles, the generals, the rich, the powerful, and every slave and free person hid in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains. And they said to the mountains and to the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of the one seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, because the great day of their wrath has come, and who is able to stand? And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor 
and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.